What is going on Warriors of Tamaris back again with another Call of Dragons video. In today's episode I'm going to show you guys my matches for Season of Strife number 2. I'll also show you my policy and the talents that I'm going to be using this season. If you're new subscribe for more content, like the video, let's get started. Alright ladies and gentlemen, Season of Strife number 2, Winter is upon us. It's an awesome map. Today you're going to see the lineup that I'm going to be using. Let's go straight to the good stuff. Multi-create. And we go with the first preset. This is the first preset that I'm going to be using this season. It starts off with Lilia and Thayer with Celestials. The artifact is a level 2 Infernal Flame. And this is what the Warped looks like. I still need to work on it, but it looks good. Next match on the list is... Good old Bertrand and Tohar with a level 4 Mirage Orb, currently my best artifact in the game. And then we have Mr. Tohar as the deputy. This is what the pet looks like. Needs some work. On to March number 3. This is Magrat Zayda with Celestials. I am using the tier of Arbon for some nice defense. And this is the Sun Lizard that I am rocking. It has the end of season advanced stone aura giving me a lot of healing. I also have defense penetration, I mean Legion HP bypass, which is pretty nice. This one is here because I use this pet with my physical units as well every now and then. So this is what I have over here. And then the next match is Mr. Walder and Velin. Now, if I was in the season of strife, the first one, I could have swapped out this skill with the Solan's blade for Mr. Alistair. It just makes this march get a lot of merits, almost similar to Bertrand and Tohar. But for this season, I'm going to be doing something different. I will have Tara as a deputy over here. The only reason I haven't done it yet is because she's only level 53. I tried it out and the outcome wasn't too good. So I'm waiting to level her up and she will be good to go. So this is what the lineup is going to look like. Going to switch this pet and put it over here. So this is what the pet looks like if you want to check it out. Um, needs some work, but it's good enough. And we're going to use Celestials. Why go and fight with weak marches when you have strong ones? So everything here is Celestials. I could have used Vestals over here, but that 20% HP, hmm. It looks good, but the Celestials just do a lot more damage. So you have four Celestial marches, and then we have... The good old Goresh and Skogul with my level 1 spirit bond talk. I am not a whale. I don't spend a lot on artifacts. And this is the Bruin Bear built with the hero scale crits. The mission is to try and get into a bunch of crowded range units and then wreck them with the crits. So that's what my first lineup looks like. On to the second lineup. We have my multiple cavalry marches. And this is what I have for this season. The MVP so far has been Mr. Danfell and Alistair. Not Alistair. What is this guy called? Theodore. So Danfell Rage Skill um, can trigger this ability right here known as the Halfling Fury. And that Halfling Fury is going to give you two debuffs on the enemy. So these debuffs are considered part of the Rage Skill. And when you get these two debuffs, you are going to max out on the stacks for Mr. Theodore. And you're going to get 60% hero skill damage for Theodore, which is just crazy. Plus, what I have noticed after playing, after fighting people on the field, is that this march has been the tankiest. It is the last one to die. So it's very, very tanky. Sometimes I use a defense artifact here and all my other marches are on red or yellow. But this march is still going strong. And it does a lot of damage as well. I like it the most out of all discovery marches that we have here right now. Um, my first lineup here is Forondil and Mr. Mogro. That is because Forondil has a 40% attack over here. Which can help Mogro do a lot of damage with his rage skill. I decided to use the defense artifact because the march is lacking some defense. The good thing is Mogro also gives out one stack for the Berserker Phaedric and so that's a good thing. This is what the pet looks like. Need some work? I'm improving it slowly. 
On to the next match, we have the usual Bakshi Emrys. This one is the one that does the most damage in my lineup. It's because of this artifact. I get like 18% attack here combined with this 62% attack. It's just ridiculous the amount of damage these two can put out. And Emrys also has another 25% physical attack over here. Just crazy. On top of that, Bakshi has more attack here as well, 16%. To make things even better, Emery's fourth skill comes out to life. When I'm swarming, somebody also deals 15% more skill damage when attacking targets that have been surrounded. So this march just goes crazy in a multiple cavalry lineup. It's the one that does the most damage. So we talked about this already, the synergy. Let me show you the pet. This is what the, the pet looks like. This is what I'm using. Need some work. I'm building it slowly. Um, I'm going to be adding Fierce Attack, Intense Fierce Attack, and the Angry Roar is going to go over here. Did I show you the pet for Emrys? This is what the pet looks like. Need some work. I need to regenerate and get more slots for more skills. Keeping it pushing, we have Mr. Tobin and Urag. Now, some of you will be like, um, why not put Urag as the primary? Now, one thing I noticed is if you put Tobin as the primary, this march is going to be very tanky because Tobin is going to be the first one to trigger his rage skill with unyielding rush. So when he does that, you're going to get mercy right from the beginning of the fight. And when you fight ranged units, this is going to be useful. If you put Tobin as a deputy, he will probably do his rage skill on turn number 4 or turn number 5. By then you may have taken a lot of damage. So this one helps if he is the primary. This is the artifact, only level 1, not a whale. If I could improve them, it would have been nice. And then the pet I'm using is this one right here. This advanced moon rage goes crazy on cavalry. It is awesome. Now this pet is also what I'm going to use on my infantry. It's the one I have put over here. So this is a good march. It's excellent. And then we have the um, Skogol and Nika with this skill over here, which is kind of like the MVP, the Gorilla Tactics. It makes it so that this march is the first one to hit the enemy. That is pretty good. And the pet looks a little something like this. I'm using the pet that I'm using on Goresh. I might bring another moon bear over here because Nika does some rage skill as well. But we'll see. And then the springboard feather is level 5. I need to take it to 6 stars soon. So this is my best multiple cavalry lineup right now. So we have my best mage lineup. Best multiple cavalry lineup. Let's go on to the next lineup of this season. Okay, Warriors of Tamaris, let's check out lineup number 3 which is for the archers and this is what i have at a quick glimpse you're gonna notice that i have zeta as the primary that is because of this lineup that you see here my margaret is the primary with the celestial talent tree and over here i have zeta as the primary with the archer talent tree sometimes i switch this artifact with the heart of the kamasi so that's what i do a few times so we click on the match you see what we're working with Six stars maxed out level two gilded crossbow and this is the pet that i'm using right now with the advanced chain strike not so bad on to the next one we have syndrion frager i'm um, level five shadow games shadow blades and this is the night rock i only have level one gold crest so no point putting it here the third march is kinara and husk with a level two rattle spear this is the snow peak rock. Need some work. And that's pretty much it. And then we have Nico and Terra. All these marches are archers. And finally, you know what? Let me show you the pet. So this is the artifact level 5 maxed out. And then we have the pet. I'm using the other sand lizard as well. Get more healing. Pretty good. And then over here we have the Goresh and Skoggle. With the spirit one talk and this is the warpet so this is my full archer lineup this is what i use 
Now I have other cavalry lineup as well. This one right here, it's made, it's made of two infantry and three cavalry heroes. As you can see here, the skill cavalry heroes are the one, the primary. This lineup is not too fast. I bring it out when I have run out of, you know, cavalry to use. Like I've synchronized the match speed, they all move together at the same speed. So that's a pretty good thing. So this is what I use sometimes. And last but not least, we're going to check out my final lineup, which is made up of five multiple cavalry marches. It is what I like to use when all my cavalry are healthy. So this is my five multi-cavalry lineup. The only new change is I removed Skoggle and Nika, and then I brought Alistair and I'm using Magrat as a deputy over here. So Alistair can bring, you know, 10% normal attack damage. Magrat has this crazy rage skill and she can give 40% attack over here. On top of that, she can provide some healing, which is nice. And then Alistair has some good defense. This is pretty good lineup. But most of the time I put different heroes here. I can put, I can put Nika. I can put Tara if I want to get some boost for my cavalry. I can put, um, where is Indis? Okay, Indis is hiding somewhere here. I can put Indis here as well. So it just depends on who I want to put here. So we're going to click. Okay, for now, this is what the lineup looks like. This is my full cavalry lineup, five March cavalry. And then this is my four March cavalry and one infantry. This is the lineups that I'm using this season. And now we're going to check out the policy and the seasonal talents. Okay, Warriors of Tamaris, with all of that out of the way, let us check out the seasonal talent that I'm going to be rocking this season. We are now almost, is it midway through the season? Let's see the August stone. So when we click the August stone, we are almost here. We need this one to unlock the last seasonal talents. So I haven't picked any talent yet. That's because I'm hesitant on whether to go with Mars Warfare or Battle Acuity. But it looks like I will be taking Battle Acuity with the Long Range Warfare. Now the reason I'm doing that is because when we go to more information over here, we click on the Legions. I have 2 million Ballistas and 1.7 million Celestials. So it will be a good idea to go with Long Range Warfare to have some fun. So when we go back over here, I will be pick picking this. I'll take the March Speed. I'll take this one. And then I'll take Long Range Warfare. Then I'm going to pick Prayer of Light, 100% faster return speed. And I'm going to go Hack and Slash because I use 5 March Cavalry. The other one, I'm going to put it... Where should I put it? I'll have two points left. Maybe I'll go either reduce cost of resource healing or I'll take this one. It just depends. Now, depending on how the season goes, if the war is over with like maybe 10 or 15 days left before the season comes to an end, I have saved my one reset that I'm going to use to pick up this point, take maybe this one, pick this and then grab this too. For the last few weeks of the season when there is no war. So I want to get the full advantage. That's why I haven't chosen yet. I don't want to waste my reset for no reason. It's because I want to save it for battle preparation in the last two weeks of the season. If the war is over. Up next, I'm going to show you guys my seasonal policy. So we're going to go over here. This is the policy. I have already maxed out almost everything. From here, you go with easy does it. Stay away from this one. You don't really need it. People don't farm during war. Plus, they are very, very careful. It would be a waste. Over here, you go counter magic because 70% of players in Call of Dragons are mage players. So this is why you go counter magic. You'll have more to hit on the field. Here you go counter infantry. Because many infantry tanks on the field, you have no choice but to pick both of these. And then from here, you have apothecary upgrade or healthcare reform. Which one should you pick? This season, I decided to try something different. On the first note here, I did Apothecary Upgrade. And then the second one, I went Healthcare Reform. Now, let me show you the difference between these two. So this one is going to increase your product elixir capacity as you, at your hospital. 
it means you don't have to log in every time. But with this one, you're going to have to log in every time. But the benefit is you get more healing per day. So let's go to the hospital and I make things clear for you. So with the apothecary upgrade, as you can see here, my capacity has gone to 831. But my daily elixir production has only gone down to 826. So which means I'll have a higher capacity but lower production per day. Now if you take healthcare reform, this one is probably going to be 200 for me. And then over here, it will be like 1.1 million elixir production per day. So as you can see here, I would make like 350,000 more elixir if I go elixir production. I'll just have to log into the game every six hours to make sure I claim them. So if you're going to be super active, go with healthcare reform. You're going to make a lot every single day. Um, you're going to heal a lot with healthcare reform. This one right here. If you're very active. If you're not very active, I suggest you take this one, the first one. And then when you go to the second one, don't take the second one. Take the healthcare reform instead. It's a good mix. So over here is going to be up to you. I don't know much how to explain here. You just take what fits you. And here you have no choice. Get all of them. From here I went healthcare diligence. Which is pretty good. I like it. It's because of the stamina. If you use infantry a lot. This is how you win the war guys. You're going to be sending lots of infantry. Your Gorish and Skogul is going to be healthy. Now for the alliances that pick this one. The Gorish and Skogul is going to run out of stamina. And they're going to get pushed back to their starting region. So you guys need to think. Sometimes don't get tempted by some of the good stuff that you see here. Like this 100% elixir capacity limit. This is good. But what's the point if all of your infantry tanks don't have any stamina? You guys are just going to get wrecked. So you need to take something like this. This is the way to go. Stamina limit bonus plus 50%. Excellent. We already talked about this. You go with healthcare reform on the second one, if you like. The best thing to do is take healthcare reform on both of them. Get this healthcare reform and then get this healthcare reform as well. You're going to produce a lot per day if you log into the game more often. That's the way to go. And from here, grab whatever looks good for you. Now for me here, I decided to go with stand alone. Deal more damage to army groups. I don't think I'm going to be spending a lot of time inside an army group. I'll just full send my Gorish and Skogul. The new infantry still needs some work. And then here you got to get both of this. Take your shared glory to 20. Here if you want to kill your troops, you can just activate it. I'm not going to do it. The more troops I have, the more healing I get. Why should I kill them? I only kill them if... We are going to be defending Bastion or the passes. And then here, you just get them. So this is the policy that I'm using this season. My only regret, I think, is taking Apothecary Upgrade. Because I log into the game a lot and I only produce 820 per day. If I had taken this one, I would have been producing 1.1 million per day. So that is the big difference. Yeah, next season I'm only taking healthcare reform. I'm not doing this apothecary upgrade again. So this is my seasonal policy. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new, subscribe for more content. Until then, talk to you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.